Hello everybody, today I will be doing the writers a weird tag. See what I did there? That was really weird. Uh, this is a tag by JC Carp- no. I stole it from JC Carpenter. Shit, I don't know who did the original. Let me have a quick check. So she saw it from Laura Wright's channel. And she didn't say who, who she got it from. But it doesn't matter. Anyway, we're all, we all love each other here, right? Original Elliot Brooks. Oh, cool. I like Elliot. Uh, okay, I'll link to that below. Um, I'll link to all three. So I'll link to JC Carpenter's video. I'll link to Elliot Brooks's original video. And I will also link to Laura Wright's video, even though... I haven't seen it and I've never watched her channel, but hopefully that will change. Anyway, the right is a weird tag. There are 10 questions to this. This is an author tube tag. We're going to jump straight in. So question number one, do you have bizarre internet searches? If so, what's the weirdest one? I suppose I do. Um, actually, a lot of mine are probably quite weird because they're like a lot of them are like how to say so and so in French. We'll go in and have a look at the last day or so, I suppose. Filter by date and product. So I just want search, which will have an image search as well, see what comes up in that. Okay, so recent searches, we've got uh, national pen discount codes and voucher codes, because I was getting some branded pens made, uh, downloader and converter YouTube to MP3, honeymoon beach, that was for writing an article, what have we got from yesterday? Is far-fetched hyphenated, I actually t typed is far-fetched hyphenated. It is, by the way. Uh, what have we got? Align monitors, that's just uh, a reminder to myself. New Zealand PM, because I couldn't remember her name, it's Jacinda Ahern. These are all pretty basic ones, really. Holy Festival, Bolsonaro, Hail Satan Netflix, Tim Tam's Ingredients, Coup de Grasse, How Many People Died Spanish Flu. So probably not anything that obscene. I don't know, when it comes to like how to kill people and stuff, I already know how to, so I don't have to look it up. Question number two. Do you write people you know and dislike into your story as villains or dumb people to kill off? No, because, I don't know, I do find that kind of petty in a way. The way I come up with characters anyway, the, 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 character, the characters are rarely stolen from real life directly. They're sometimes influenced by them. And so quite often my characters, they might have personality traits by one person and like the appearance of another person, for example. But I don't, when I do a person who's a bad guy or whatever, I don't specifically choose people who I think are bad, you know. And I, I think that actually helps as well because I think that stops you from having these really one-sided bad guys that like, you know, are just these like pantomime villains. I like it when they're a bit more human. Question number three, does personal hygiene sometimes come second to writing? Yes. I mean, work in general, to be honest, especially during lockdown, because there have been times when I've not been out for like a week, so, so I sometimes go like, I'll, I'll skip a shower and stuff like that, um, you know, but, but again, that's typically during lockdown as well, because it, it just, like, if I'm going out and I'm going to go and meet somebody, I'll have a shower, you know, <laughs> so if I'm just at home hermiting, I, I guess I just shower less, because... I don't feel the need to as much. Question number four, do you go on baby name websites to help you name your characters? No, actually quite often what I do is I look at my bookcases and I'm like, oh, we need a new surname, Crouch, that would do. Okay, I just got that from Blake Crouch. What about a new first name, Frank from Frank Herbert, June. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of how I approach that. Question number five, do you have a list of actors and actresses that would play your characters if there was an adaptation made? I can't say I've ever really thought about it too much. Um, Funny, actually, because normally that's a question you get asked quite a lot, you know, but it's never come up in interviews and stuff. I mean, uh, who would I get for Miley O'Hara? Should have to be someone like, I don't, because this is the thing, I don't know many young people. Actually, maybe like Maisie Williams? I don't know, she doesn't have enough tattoos, but you could give her some. But she's, uh, she's a pretty good actress, I guess. Uh, I don't know, she'd need to be quite weird looking as well, though, like, I don't know. And then for Lightfold, um, I quite like, actually, I do quite like Paddy Considine. He could be quite a good James, James Lightfold. Or obviously David Tennant, but I don't know. I think, no, it'd be too much of a, almost a cliche to get David Tennant to do it. I don't, I don't watch movies much, you know, so. And I don't really, like, think of my characters in terms of, like, oh, this one looks like George Clooney or whatever. Question number six, have you ever stared at a stranger because they look like one of your characters? No. <laughs> I think as well, though, like, my ideas of what my characters look like 
are quite, um, what's the word, they're quite uh, flexible almost. And people in general actually, like when I see friends and stuff, like everyone always looks very slightly different to how they are in my head. Um, yeah, it's a weird one that. Question number seven. Sorry, my cat was in the way. Do you talk to yourself to help work through scenes? If so, where do you talk to yourself? Um, no, but when I'm doing my edits and I'm reading through my manuscript, and actually when I do this for a client as well, so for example, uh, I did this with Charlie Heathcote's book, and uh, I'm doing it with Jason from Jason's Weird Reads. Uh, I'm editing his novel for him. And I read that through in my head to make sure that the sentences work and that they scan correctly, you know? And that's how you kind of identify stumbling blocks in the sentences. If you try and read something sort of aloud in your head, or even better, just actually aloud in front of you, uh, you tend to get more of a feel for how that sentence works, you know? Um, but I don't do it to, to, to help with dialogue and stuff like that. And weirdly as well, when I read other people's books by people who I know, I read it in their voice. Question eight, while writing, do you make the expressions your characters are making? No. What do you mean like, oh, he raised his eyebrow and I'd just be here like, <laughs> I don't, no, I, I don't do that, no. Question number nine, do you ever practice answering interview questions in case you make it big? No, there's no need, like I've done interviews here and there, like never big interviews, you know. I'd love to go on the hot ones actually and do like vegan wings with hot sauce, that'd be cool. Um, but no, because no, like, I mean I've probably done hundreds of interviews over the last 10 years. A lot of them are text based as well. Um, so you don't even really need to pra like practice. With, I mean that is practice, you know, you get to sit down and you consider your answer and stuff. I've done a few video interviews, a few in person ones. I mean, I've been on like the radio and TV and stuff, so you know, I didn't, I didn't practice for that. I didn't, didn't even practice for job interviews, man. <laughs> Question number ten: Do you have a soundtrack and or playlist for your book or scenes from your book? Yes, actually, this is a weird one. I don't have playlists that I listen to while I'm writing. In fact, quite often while I'm writing, I'm watching Netflix. But I have some playlists that I've created that are designed to go with my books, you know? Um, so like if you're reading Formally, here's a playlist uh, of tunes from Formally. And they're on, uh, they're on Spotify somewhere. I think if you find m my account on Spotify, they'll, they'll, they'll be linked through that. Um, they're not particularly good though. I mean, I don't know. They kind of work because quite a few of them are actually quite influenced by music. So for example, coming up to the house. Uh, which is, it, it started out as a horror screenplay and then I wrote it into a novella and published them together. It's actually under a Creative Commons license but only for the screenplay. So any movie maker can take that screenplay and do what they want with it and turn it into a movie. They can do rewrites, etc. Uh, they, they just have to credit me. Whereas the, the novella of it is what I retain the copyright to, which I thought was quite cool. Um, but that's like very heavily inspired by um, Norwegian death metal and also Tom Waits. So in the movie there's like two scenes, there's a montage and also I guess the end credits. I mean the title coming up to the house is named after a Tom Waits song. So um, that kind of works quite well with it I think, but other ones maybe not so much. So there you have it, that is the writer's a weird tag. I'm going to go into my recent comments and um, try and tag a few people who might want to take this. Obviously I'm, I'm limited to author tubers as well. Off the top of my head, I will tag Charlie Heathcote and Jason's Weird Reads. Todd the Librarian would be an interesting one as I know he's a writer. Uh, Cam from Wolfshop Publishing if he does tags. I don't think he does tags anymore. Uh, he's too cool for tags. Uh, who else writes? Anyone who writes, I've got I've gone blank now. Okay, I've gone blank and my comments aren't loading because typical. So if you're an author tuber and uh, you fancy having a bash at this, definitely give it a go. Uh, in the meantime, as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments what you thought of my answers, I guess. Hit that subscribe button for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish and or author tubish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.